This is Bose Hamill at the Cullen Eye Institute at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, and this video deals with the treatment of iris epithelial inclusion cysts with intracystic alcohol injections. It is very important to appreciate that this technique works only for those cysts that are closely applied to the corneal endothelium such that you can access the cystic space directly through the cornea or the sclera with no intervening aqueous. If this technique is employed for a cyst that is on the iris but not connected to the cornea, you run a very high risk of rupturing the cyst and I would recommend strongly against it. This is a typical epithelial implantation cyst following cataract surgery. At some time during the procedure, epithelium was introduced into the iris stroma and a cyst formed. Management of these cysts can be done in a number of ways, but but the method I'll be presenting in this video is intracystic alcohol injection using ethanol. This was actually first reported in 2003 in the Journal of Ophthalmology by Zora Baruzzi and uh, Kotodust. The injection technique was further modified by Carol Shields in a paper in JAMA Ophthalmology in 2014, and I will be modifying the injection apparatus again for this video. The goal is to drain the cyst as completely as possible, replace the contents with absolute alcohol, allow it to work, and drain it again. One of the difficulties with this procedure is the very small volumes involved. This is a photograph of the setup reported by Carol Shields and uses a three-way T extension with two female attachment arms and one male attachment. And as you can see, you can connect two syringes to a single needle a problem arises, however, with the amount of dead space in the T-connector on the aspiration syringe. Because of the small volumes in many of these cysts, it's possible that the dead space is so large that you're really not exchanging cyst fluid for alcohol as much as one would like. To deal with this issue, I've used a blunt fill needle to fill the majority of the space within the connector so that dead space is minimized. With this setup, I generally attach the alcohol syringe to the hub of the connector and aspirate through the sidearm. The first step is to make paracentesis, irrigate the anterior chamber with 1% non-reserved xylocaine, and then wall off the cyst both anteriorly and posteriorly to the iris with viscoelastic so that in the event the cyst bursts or you have a leak, you can contain the alcohol. The next step is to support the globe and then insert the 30 gauge needle into the interior of the cyst, being very careful not to lacerate the wall of the cyst. The cyst is then gently collapsed as far as safely possible, taking care not to lacerate the cyst wall. The cystic space is then filled with alcohol, being careful not to overfill and rupture the cyst. Here's another view shot with a cell phone video, and I apologize for the quality, but it shows the setup. The surgeon holds the needle in position, and because of the delicacy of the aspiration irrigation, I like to use an assistant to control one or the other of the syringes. This allows for a fairly precise control of the volume and reduces the risk of rupturing the cyst. It's important to have good anesthesia so the patient doesn't move, and I have firmly fixated my, my hand steadying the needle to the patient's orbital rim. The ethanol is then left in position for about 30 seconds to a minute, and one watches for the wall of the cyst to become frosted and slightly opaque, which indicates that the ethanol is killing the contained epithelial cell. Utilizing the aspiration syringe, that ethanol fill is withdrawn, and the cyst refilled. I generally do about three exchanges of ethanol to make sure that I've killed all the epithelial cells before finally withdrawing the needle and collapsing the cyst for the final time. Following this, the INA is then used to remove the residual viscoelastic. The patient is then treated with topical corticosteroids, antibiotics, and a cycloplegic. In most cases, the cyst remains collapsed but can occasionally recur. If that happens, this procedure can be repeated. 
One of the complications that you'd rather not experience is rupture of the cyst. How is it recognized? Well, here's a patient undergoing cyst filling with alcohol, and the cyst wall ruptures. And in the pupil, right there, you can see the Schlieren flow of the ethanol as it's mixing with the viscoelastic and the aqueous. Because the cyst was isolated with viscoelastic, the irrigation was successful in removing the alcohol, and postoperatively, the patient did not suffer any loss of endothelial cells or significant inflammation. Unfortunately, the cyst did recur, but we were able to re-inject it with ethanol at a later date with resolution of the cyst.